joining me now is Mike Neville, ex-Scotland Yard detective and former head of Lambeth's Missing Persons Union. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning, David. Um, this is just such a, a shockingly sad story, actually. Spanish police have now found human remains as part of their search for British teenager Jay Slater in Tenerife, as we know, a 19-year-old. He was clubbing, that's what young people do. He then met two men. He somehow ended up at the other part of the island. Then he missed the bus home. He phoned a friend. He had no mobile phone battery left or 1% of that left and then undertook a 10-hour walk to try and get home and of course he then disappeared. Finally human remains have been found very near the last triangulation of that mobile phone and near his clothes where they were found as well and of course just a shocking story for parents around the country. Yeah, absolutely and my condolences uh, to his uh, parents and who, who who at a young age hasn't done anything uh, foolish oh, or stupid and this has just gone terribly wrong. At least uh, I suppose the, the one benefit of this there is some closure. The worst thing is if somebody's never found and you, and you don't know what's uh, going on. One and, and I congratulate the Spanish police having found him. It's taken four weeks but when you look at the terrain it is absolutely nightmarish. The, the ravines, the vegetation, everything like that. What I, what I find odd, though, is how the Spanish police have handled the media, because what they've done is that they've... They said they were stopping the search, but they, they obviously haven't and carried on the mm. search. They really held any press conferences. They, they've dealt with it in a sort of 1970s cop style of, of don't involve the media. And, of course, once you create this uh, vacuum where they could have said, look, we really, uh, we've really checked all these leads out, there's nothing happening, uh, and we're really focusing on finding him in this area because of the phone ping, because of the witness evidence. What happened was a vacuum was created and we had all these crazy conspiracy theories involving drugs, Rolex watches, mm. yachts appearing and all this sort of stuff, which causes but further misery, I suppose, for the family. But, but I think you have to understand the Spanish system because, of course, it's different over there to here because you have the police locale, which are the local police, and this is the Guardia Civil. These are originally the military police, and so, therefore, they come from a background where you don't share anything, and they were the ones with the drones. They're the ones that went into the ravines, and, of course, that's probably the reason for the media blackout. Possibly so, but even so, if you're the Spanish authorities, whoever is dealing with this, if you're the Minister of Justice or whatever, whoever's responsible, it yeah. looks bad yeah. on the Spanish police how this is handled internationally. But the facts are that at least there's some closure for the for the family now. Let's hope when they do the toxicology test, the postmortem, they come to some conclusion so the family know what happened. Yeah, I mean, I think the sun's being a bit harsh. How did J Cops miss the body is the front page, but. If you've been to Tenerife, it, it's a, a, a volcanic landscape. It, it's unlike anything uh, you've seen in, anywhere else. And, of course, you've got these very deep ravines as well. And I think the, the police and the authorities have actually done a good job. And, as you say, loads and loads of conspiracy theories abound as well. Let's talk about another story, if we can. We have spoken a lot about not having enough prison places in this country and the fact is we have not invested in the infrastructure and in fact in terms of the numbers of prison places they're very few considering we have a population of what 67 million. So the Labour government's new brilliant plan is to release people early and this is in the Telegraph. This early release scheme, wait for this, drug dealers are going to get out 18 months earlier and the reason for that is because on a statutory sentence at the moment you get released after 50 per serving 50 percent of your time but under their scheme you're going to, going to get out after you've served 40 percent of your time that seems a bit nuts to me well it's absolutely crazy and the, and the minister Mahmood is saying that uh, if she, she doesn't enact this then it'll, it'll break down it'll end up in the breakdown of law and society well surely releasing drug dealers into society is, is far more likely to have that effect than doing something quick about it now there's all sorts of disused army camps there's all sorts of police cells around the country which if somebody had some backbone and got to get a grip we saw how the the army opened up the nightingale hospitals in covid within mm -hmm. a few weeks that could be done. And what the, the, what grieves me all the time, David, I always saw myself as a police officer sticking up for the little people. 
And the big people, these ministers and judges who live in nice areas and whatever, they're the ones who decide to release these drug dealers. They never live with the consequences. Those drug dealers are going to back to the council estates where the little people live, who have to put up with their wicked behaviour, who have to put up with the crime that those drug dealers mm -hmm. attack, you know, that, that, that results in. And all the time, it is the people at the bottom who suffer from these ridiculous policies. I, 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 just think I, it's a, I couldn't a agree more. Way. You look, our current capacity is 87,000 places in prison. Now that makes no sense at all. As I said, if you have a population of 67 million, by 2027 it's thought the capacity will go up to 106,000. And so surely, you're right, they need to take in places. I mean, look, we managed to get Scampton and Weathersfield up, didn't we, for the migrant arrivals. Why can't we do the same? Well, a, a lack of there's a, there's a lack of ambition. You know, in the sense that the Tories always did. I remember Ken Clark doing a similar thing to save money on his budget, not thinking that the police budget might suffer the other way around. And Labour, I think, have always really seen criminals as sort of victims of society. So they've got no real ambition to uh, lock people up. So you've got the, the two parties doing the same thing and, and, and ended up with the same... Uh, result, even though they're doing it for d for different reasons, and as I say, it's the people at the bottom who will have to put up with this drug dealing increase uh, and the evils that follow it. Because it's not just drug dealing is not. It, 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 in its own, it results in thefts, robberies, more shoplifting, more misery for, for on their states, on in communities. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree more. And of course, then you've got the real problems of county lines as well, young people being used and, and used as drug mules as well uh, across the country. Let's talk about one final story, if we can. This is about spiking is to be made a specific offence in the King's speech. The government is set to introduce a new law to make spiking this criminal offence a specific one. Now, a spiking by that, I mean where you put a drug into someone's drink or into your body via another method. The figures show an astronomical rise in this, up 13%, quadrupling, what, in something in, in the last few years, particularly in bars, nightclubs. In fact, my niece was telling me about, I think it was my niece, was telling me about young people who were out and suddenly realised that they couldn't actually control their arms and legs and they'd been spiked. Yeah, but I, what I don't see is why you need a new law. The law is from 1861, but what difference does that make? The law about assaulting people is from 1861. The laws about murder existed for hundreds of years. It, it, it works, and it just seems to be a, a, a sort of signalling, a virtue signalling thing that we're doing something about this. When when something's already done, the yeah. resources would be better spent, you know, spend that money that it takes to do all these lawyers to look through these new laws on police officers who can actually do something about the 1861 law, which is adequate and deals with anybody who puts poison in any. But you're uh, saying, so you're, you're, you're essentially saying this is about political capital because we don't need it under the current law, the 1861 offences against the person out. We don't need it. That, absolutely, that's my view. Because, but it'll take again. Oh, lots of lawyers have been paid to do this. Uh, and that time and effort would be better spent on enforcing it and catching the people who are actually doing it rather than big things in the King's speech. Well said. Uh, really good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Mike Neville there, ex-Scotland Yard detective and former head of Lambeth's Missing Persons Unit.